And my partner didn't see it right away. It took him time to spot it because he was used to working with people like Beyonce and Jessica Simpson and Britney Spears and people who already had the big budgets. Sure. But going from zero to 50 is a thousand times harder than going from 50 to 100. And yeah. it takes the people with the vision to put somebody on the right path, to create the content and help build the brand. I mean, mm-hmm. that's really what it takes. And luckily, everyone finally got on board and we turned her into a billion dollar brand. Hey, this is a quick shout out from one of our awesome sponsors. Check this out. Thank you to Tracy down at Tranquil Turn Massage in downtown Coeur d'Alene. Look, my wife and I, we see Tracy and her team every single month for a couple's massage, and it is the best thing. Tracy is a master massage specialist and a Hanu Ashiatsu trainer. You need to reach out to Tracy and her team. Make sure that you tell them that I sent you, and you'll get 25 bucks off your next massage. Also, while you're there, check out CDA Brows, Body, and Ink. Make sure to tell Tracy that I sent you, and you'll save 100 bucks on your next tattoo brows and plasma tightening services. <laughs> Wendy, you're a model, you're a singer-songwriter who's been honored by the Songwriters Hall of Fame. You were named VH1's Best Emerging Artist. You're responsible for discovering and developing Lady Gaga. You won an original music competition called Banded recently for the band that you wrote and produced, and then they named themselves after you, and so much more. (laughs) Thank you for your time. I appreciate it. Thank you so much for having me. It's great to be here. I like to kick things off by going back a bit. Like, Where did you grow up? What was childhood like for you? Um, I grew up, I was born and raised in New York City. I'm a native New Yorker. Um, I love it. And that was an education unto itself. You know, sure. New York City is so fast paced. And, uh, you know, I became independent extremely early on in life uh, with my fake ID hopping around town uh, <laughs> in the taxi cabs. And um, so you learn a lot because the people there are very both inspirational and aspirational. Um, You know, the kids in my class, you know, their parents were some of the world leaders and um, you're, you're learning from everything around you. There's just so many, um, so many influences. It's really exciting. I've only been to New York a couple of times and I loved it out there. Just the the culture and how busy it was. It was so cool. I can't imagine like growing up without in that area. What a, what a cool experience that must've been. (laughs) It, it really was. And you become just like a little adult and you're just influenced by all the different, there's tons of culture, there's uh, tons of business happening and, and you pick it up just by being around it. Yeah. Wow. That's so cool. I want to get right into the show that you just won. This is so cool. Uh, it's it's called Banded and it was on Access TV. You were the, the songwriter and the producer for a band on there that, that ended up winning. This was the first season. Then they named themselves after you. Congratulations, by the way. What a cool thing. Thank you. Thank you so much. It was so exciting. Um, we spent four, about four months down in Nashville, which I'm, you know, based in L.A. now. But uh, we all traveled to Nashville. 25 musicians were divided into five different groups. And those five groups were each assigned a, um, you know, songwriter, producer, mentor, who basically was responsible for the band, much like a coach for a football team. You know, sure. we were writing the songs with the band, coming up with the sound, coming up with the image coming up with the stage show, you know, everything about the band. And then they performed every week in this 10,000 seat arena in the municipal auditorium in Nashville to three judges and, you know, a live audience. And we would write a new song every week and they had to execute it perfectly. Um, And the other songwriter producers who were assigned to the other bands you know, had worked with people like Miley Cyrus and Faith Hill and um, Keith Urban. And I mean, you name it, it was just, it was stiff competition. And I'm just so proud of them for how they executed it. They were incredible. What a cool thing. Now, those musicians, they they didn't know each other before they came onto the show, right? Right. They had no idea. Yeah. They had wow. never before. And the coolest thing about it, I mean, I was taken aback because I figured at least they'd all 
play the same genre. You know, this is one of the only shows that I know that it's an or original music. So American Idol, The Voice, they're all playing songs that everybody already knows and loves. And that to me is just sort of like professional karaoke. But totally. this is <laughs> something totally different. It was much more like what the music business is really like. All artists have a team around them, writing, producing, developing them into what they are. And they had to execute it every week. And my band had two punk rockers, two country artists, and a straight ahead rock and roller. And I was like, okay, <laughs> how am I going to create a sound that everyone can get behind? Because if they're not super passionate about it, and if they're not completely on board, they're never going to sell it on stage. And there's not going to be an authentic voice that goes out into the world. And that's yeah. really crucial if you want to not only make it in the music business, but have an impact on your listeners and uh, really tell a story. Love that. So what's next for, for the band? Are they going on tour or are they going to record? What's next for those guys? So we did some recordings. You can find them on Spotify. Uh, it's The name of the band is called Starland which is my last name, Wendy Starland. So that was so sweet that they <laughs> named themselves after me. I couldn't believe Super it. Cool. it was so <laughs> fun. And um, the show is called Banded, the musician competition. So it's really, uh, you can find it on Access TV, but it's also going out to something like 160 channels because it's syndicated now. So you'll, you'll be able to find it everywhere probably within the next two weeks. Love it. So cool. What a cool thing to be a part of there. Uh, now, as I was looking through your website there, you are also recently featured in Forbes magazine where you talked about fashion and music. And you mentioned that in the modeling and entertainment industry, you don't only have to be great at your craft, but you must also be a social media influencer. Like what are folks that you see that are really successful in the entertainment and music doing that other folks just aren't doing? Well, they treat their social media as not as a place to only connect with their friends and family. They really use it as their business card. You are, it is your magazine, it is your brochure. And as you turn the pages of that magazine or see every post, you are branding yourself and creating the messaging that you want to put into the world, the imagery that you want to put into the world, the content. And that is a very different type of communication then oh social media i'm just connecting with friends and trying to uh, catch up with what they're doing i don't use my social media in that way per se mm. i really um focus on the branding of it because that is who i want to show up as in my industry and because of that i've been able to generate nice income streams from it and get more jobs more opportunities I mean, look at, I wouldn't be on this podcast right now if we hadn't connected through social media. So totally. this, it's a really powerful tool if used um, very strategically. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so good. So good. Yeah, social media for me has been the, the biggest impact, I would say, in connecting with just truly world changers out there. And I, I, I typically book 99% of my guests through Instagram DM with a video. I never send a message. I, I typically will do a personalized video anytime I do an invite. And you and I connected on threads, which is this new app, right? Like I'm still trying to get used to this thing. It's so interesting. But I love that, especially when things first kick off, you're able to connect with people like yourself and Eric Thomas and all these larger than life most people out there I'm like oh man i'm fairly new to the platform but so are they and so they're just willing to connect and and so social media can be so powerful in any business especially podcasting i think for sure i totally agree it's it and podcasting it's your own television show so yeah you're you basically have your own talk show and you know the kind of guests you have on and the content that you provide is is your message and and elevates your brand every day yeah. Oh, to so good. <laughs> now, in, in really in any in industry to be successful, you have to go through a ton of failures, trial and error. And, and for you, like when you make a mistake or have a mishap or have a failure there, like, how do you pick your back? How do you pick yourself back up and get back into the right mindset to keep going? Well, 
I've had plenty of failures. <laughs> yeah. So uh, I've had plenty of successes too. Thank God. Yeah. Uh, knock on wood. I got a knock on wood summit down here. But right. I, you know, the the truth is, is that who you are. I, I really believe the measure of a, a man or a woman is who they are in their weakened state. Mm. Are you going to be a kind person? Are you still going to be a generous person when you don't have much to give at that moment? If you're broken, if, you know, some situation, whether it be business, personal, um, health problems, whatever it may be, has broken you down and weakened your state. And I just feel like you have to talk to yourself and say, okay, Wendy, who am I going to be in the face of adversity? Am I going to cower to whatever is coming at me and let them win? Or am I going to allow myself to win? Am I going all of this experience that I have, all of these uh, relationships that I've built, all of the hard work and effort I put in, into building my craft, am I going to let that all just fade away based on one bad experience or whatever experience I'm in in the moment. Hell no. I am stronger than that. I'm better than that. And like they say, whatever doesn't kill you makes you stronger. Well, it also makes you wiser to let things sort of roll off your back um, more easily as time goes on, because the music business is filled with, the most predatory people, <laughs> many of them. I'm not going to say all of them. There's some yeah. amazing, wonderful people in there too. But there are a lot of predators um, looking to be close to talent and beauty and inspiration and feel like they have some modicum of control over it. And so sure. it's really important to surround yourself with people that you trust and you won't know if you trust them until you've had experiences with them. Obviously it takes time to build trust, but do your best to see if their actions match their words. Use, you know, your resilience to get yourself into the mindset and to break whatever cycles have been happening. Look at your own behavior and say, okay, did I trust somebody who is showing me signs that I could not trust them? Um, if so, were there, you know, I have to make sure that the person's action matches their words and how am I going to do that more effectively in the future? So good. And and I worked for universal (laughs) music group for a year, my early twenties and just being a part of that group and hanging out backstage and going on some of the tour buses and meeting some rock stars. I, I saw the, the folks that were trying to like get in on the wrong intentions. Right. Like, and I was just there like the early, you know, young kid in, you know, doing an internship and then landing a job with them. But for me, it was the first couple of times yeah, I was kind of starstruck, but then it was like, okay, cool. This is just normal people. Just, but you could tell like being in that role, like who was there to really kind of just get the claim of fame. Right. Oh, I was with them and got this photo and uh, it was just yeah. interesting. So, <laughs> and the truth is, not it's not exclusive to any industry it's in every industry there are opportunists everywhere and i mean that's one of the big gifts that new york city taught me is to be able to spot these people more easily because everyone is so ambitious in new york and trying to climb their way to the top and um la is definitely uh no different in terms of there are plenty (laughs) opportunists in la many more so but there's not as bright as the one in New York. So, you know, you start to see and feel what um, what everybody's trying to sell or barter or whatever it is. And yeah. you've got to really have faith in your abilities, um, not only to judge the situation, but in your abilities to recover from whatever's mm-hmm. going to happen. And how you get in that mindset is just by talking yourself through it step by step. Come on. I love that. Love that. Now, I, I have to bring this up because you have it in your, your bio there. You, you discovered and you developed one of the biggest stars in the world with Lady Gaga. You can go as high level or surfacey or deep as you'd like on this, but just curious, like, how did this come together? Like, how did this happen here? Uh, well, I had been working on material with a producer for about probably a year 
and we'd written all these songs and come up with this whole idea. And he said to me, Wendy, you know, go out and find an artist under the age of 25 who could be the female equivalent to the lead singer, the Strokes, someone who's edgy and bold that you can't take your eyes off of. And if you do, then we will, you know, write these songs and give her these songs and, and basically try to get her a record deal, which yeah. in and of itself is a very difficult thing to do. I mean, totally. people don't realize <laughs> it is literally 1% that gets the record deal. And then of that 1%, another 1% that actually makes it to the very top echelon. And I was performing, I originally met her, she was um, working at Erwin Robinson's office, who was uh, either the CEO or the president of Famous Music Publishing, a mm. music publishing company, uh, Viacom's music publishing company. And basically, I met her, she was just working there, you know, doing stuff behind the desk. And I said hi to her. She was always very nice. And then I ran into her again when she was opening up. Um, we were performing on the same bill at, uh, it was a Songwriters Hall of Fame showcase in New okay. York City at the Cutting yeah. Room. And it was a new writer's showcase and we were performing. And she said, you know, we're both going to be performing. Uh, she came up to me during sound check and said, I don't know if you remember me, but um, would love it if you could check out my show. And I said, of course, we're both performing. And I went up to her afterwards. I saw her perform. She was phenomenal. I mean, yeah. her skill level as a singer, performer, her level of confidence, her tone, her timbre, it was, it was magnificent. But the elements around her were not at her level. And so... I went to her afterwards and basically said, how attached are you to this band? And that was a, a big factor because her boyfriend was in the band, um, people she had worked with. And I said, well, if you're willing to let go of the band and have a new type of creative vision, her music was radically different at the time that I found her from the time when after we develop, developed her. Um, and I said, if you want to come on board, let's, let's work on this together. And she said, let's do it. And my partner didn't see it right away. It took him time to spot it because he was used to working with people like Beyonce and Jessica Simpson and Britney Spears and people who already had the big budgets, sure. but going from zero to 50 is a thousand times harder than going from 50 to a hundred. And yeah. it takes the people with the vision to put somebody on the right path to create the content and help build the brand. I mean, mm -hmm. that's really what it takes. And luckily everyone finally got on board and we turned her into a billion dollar brand. Come on. What a cool thing, man. What, what a cool thing to be part of that. And, um, gosh, yeah, it, it, we, we, we owe you the, 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 the thanks for putting that out. That's awesome. So cool. I mean, you've worked with a lot of musicians over the years, Snoop and Wu Tang and Black Eyed Peas. Some of my favorite folks there, um, uh, you know, obviously Lady Gaga there, but I'm sure you've had a lot of memories uh, and moments with these folks there, but was there a, a, is there a favorite interaction or favorite moment that made the biggest impact on you of all the folks you've met through the years? Well, one of my favorite moments was definitely when Lady Gaga was signing her first record deal. She was sitting on my lap at her, her lawyer's office signing the record deal. We were really close friends and she was just sat on my lap, signed it and hugged me. It, that was really special. Um, I would say another incredible moment. Well, definitely one of the best moments of my life that really started off my career was with Maceo Parker. May, um, when James Brown went solo, Maceo Parker became his lead singer, uh, became the lead singer in the band stayed intact with this huge, um, you know, James Brown has a huge horn section and it's the funk music and they're very similar. Yeah. So 
He is unbelievable. And when I was a young teenager, probably about 14 years old, um, I was clubbing in, in New York and <laughs> went and he pulled me up on stage, which was the most phenomenal experience. And at first sure. I was just like dancing around, little kid, you know, <laughs> went back down. A few songs later, he kept looking at me and was like, pulled me back up on stage again. My friends were like, what were, what's going on here? And it was the universe or God giving me a second chance at doing it right. And when I hear music, yeah. I love, I start singing. And Tyrone, the trombone player next door, he heard me and he tapped his microphone in front of my mouth. And to prove to Maceo I could sing, I started harmonizing with him. Wow. And he's like, oh my God, the girl can sing. He said, all the band off the stage except the bass player and the bass player is just and macy who plays the sax starts kicking this funky beat the two of them are jamming i start wailing on their stage for 20 minutes what? 20 minutes and i this is i'm such a little kid and it's in front of a thousand people and this is my first gig and at the end macy is like what's your name darling I said, Wendy Starlin, and every, the crowd's going wild. And at the end, the bass player takes a string off his bass guitar and he coils it up to a little ring and he gets down on one knee as if he's proposing to me. And he puts it on my ring finger and he says to the crowd, he goes, everybody, shut up. I got something to say. He's like, Wendy. <laughs> I don't know what you're doing in this club. You're way too young to be here, but you have a gift from God. And if you do not devote the rest of your life to using this gift, you are going to rob the rest of us of something so special. So from this day forward, you are married to music. And he puts the bass string around my ring finger. And I just, I got the chills. It was, wow. it was monumental. And from that day forward, I was married to music and I devoted my life to it. And it has been my every day. Come on. That is unbelievable. What a cool story. That would have been, man, it would have been cool to be in the crowd to see that happen too. <laughs> like, and then now I see you today, like what a, what an unbelievable story that is. So cool. Man. Yeah. That bass string. Well, I will always have that bass string. It's. Yeah, do you just, still have it? Of course, of course. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> so cool. Now, you're also the founder and you're the CEO of Give Back Entertainment. This is so cool. When I was reading about it on your website there, for those who don't know, like what is Give Back Entertainment? What is it that you guys do? Give Back Entertainment is a platform that cross promotes artists, music, and brands. And so basically I am now, Give Back Entertainment has, not really been super active over the past few years, but now it's getting a whole re-emergence because um, I'm a co-founder with a couple, um, Aris and Rhonda Persidis, uh, of a new platform called Music Soul. And we mm. are incorporating give back entertainment with Music Soul. And what that does is it really helps to monetize artist career and create a middle class for the music industry. So for example, if you look at something like Spotify, Spotify, most people don't realize it. It's 0.004th of a penny per stream. I don't think people oh. realize that, but wow. it's, I believe it takes something like 25 million streams to create $1,000. Wow. I did not know so, that. No, I mean, when you think about that, you see, you know, millions of streams are like, oh, that, that artist must be rolling in the dough. <laughs> that is not the case. And so um, what we have put together is a platform that implements new technologies and techniques for artists to combine streaming and advertising and brand partnerships and label services and all of it into one where um, it can be white labeled for various um, big companies that want to integrate it into their platform. So 
let's say you are, you know, a big Fortune 100 company and you are just getting customers at the point of purchase, but you want them to keep coming back to your website. Well, they're only really going to do that through entertainment. That's the only right. thing that's really going to keep people coming back. And so we have a numerous def, uh, numerous technology services and things that can be integrated into the platform, um, artists, video, entertainment, all different kinds of things that will help monetize the artist and further monetize the brand and create recurring revenue and eyeballs for both. Man, I love that. It's so important. And yeah, I didn't know that they got paid so little on those downloads, but to be able to help fund those artists, up and coming artists and things like that, it's so important. What a great thing you're doing there. Wendy, Thank you, you are, are an absolute world changer. I am, am so honored to have you on my show. Thank you so much for coming on and sharing your story. I'm excited for what's next with everything you got going on. I'm so excited for you and just proud of you for all of the accomplishments that you've been able to do and just winning the, the new Banded show. Congratulations again. Thank you for your time. I appreciate it. Thank you so much for having me on here. I hope to see you again soon. Thank you so much for checking out the show today. I really appreciate it. I hope that my guest was able to bring you some amazing wisdom and knowledge to help you continue to fight for your goals, your dreams, and your purpose. If you could do me one big favor and just hit that subscribe button, I would so appreciate it. Thank you so much for your time. Keep changing the world. I believe in you. Have an amazing day.